What's up, Steve Kirks? And it's Dodie. So fun having Steph Dolson on the pod. Steph Dolson is one of my absolute favorite people on this planet. Always have a blast together. But what was really inspiring um, about knowing her through her senior year of high school through college, we went to UConn together, is just how she, her confidence and how she transformed not only her confidence, but her body image and how she's continuing to grow and just shine. Um, very, very inspirational and um, very cool to see. Yeah, I found that quote that on the internet, if they're going to stare, they might as well stare at something fun. I just, I think that for my image, that is what I think of Steph after having that conversation, just fun. She is a fun, fun person and sweet and kind. And I mean, she's 6'5". She's 6'5", plays professional basketball. She was drafted number six. We can Google Google all that, all her accolades. Uh, but she tapped into her makeup and how her body is a canvas and she just wants to share that. And um, standing out is one thing. She's always gonna stand out being that tall, but how she can just have fun with it. Um, and I think that was awesome and how she shared that story. And then just her journey on her diet and losing weight and staying disciplined in that world and is seems so happy and successful and now is competing for the US USA basketball three on three team that is eventually going to qualify and then go on to the Olympics. Yeah. She's tr- talking about wanting to lose 30 pounds. So she'd be a better athlete coming back from an injury, trying to make team USA. I think it's pretty awesome. So pretty cool. let's get into it. Let's go. Steph, welcome to the show. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you join us today. Uh, what are you sipping on? Some Deer Park water. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. D. Kirk, what do you got? Got some clutch coffee. What do you got? You meant brother, me too. Some clutch coffee and our clutch coffee tumblers. I was going to say, do you guys have the same? Shout out. Yeah, of course. We got a little coffee, coffee sponsor. Amazing. You know, we should probably get uh, our guys to hook Steph up with some clutch coffee. I think so too. Add that we can to make the that list. happen. We can make that happen. We can definitely Thanks. make that happen. Um, that. Steph, just for the listeners who um, live under a rock, um, <laughs> how do we know each other? <laughs> we went to UConn together. Um, we lived together, not in the same room, but the <laughs> same apartment. <laughs> Uh, you were at UConn for like 10 years so you played with many uh, generations and we won a championship together we sure did um, what was what was your first impression of me of you um, I'd say I was like intimidated but I think I remember our conversation I think one of our first conversations was you telling us I tell everyone the story, how when we got to college, not to be a baby when it comes to injuries, so that we don't all run to the trainer and like, you know, you know, you're freshman, you're going to get hurt, but they don't like people who cry about a lot of injuries here. So don't do that. And I tell everyone that story. Oh my God. Like pretty positive. That was was you telling us that. (laughs) Um, That sounds about right. Cause I was always injured. Sounds right. Yeah, definitely sounds right. (laughs) Yeah, that's not right. Um, My first impression of you, if you don't mind me sharing, was you, I think it was like your recruiting trip when we did like the scavenger hunt where we had to like run up the gamble stairs and whatever. And whoops, sorry. And (laughs) Come on, Dodie. (laughs) Do not disturb the phone. (laughs) It's literally on silent too, but anyway. Um, And I was like, oh my God, she is going to be so good because you were such a big senior or junior. When did you, when did you commit to? Um, I don't remember, but I think my, my um, official visit was when I was a senior. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And we were like running up the stairs with the beam, with like the sandbag or whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, she's going to set some really good screens. Like let's go. <laughs> and I was ready. And then sure enough. I mean, you're the, by far the best on-ball screener, the best hands, best feet. You even got that three down that I've ever played with. So 
first impression was perfect. Well, wow, um, so uh, what I really want to tap into and ask you about is um, what is I think is very inspiring is your body image and you're six five, right? Mm -hmm. So you're six five. You, how old were you when um, you were six five? Um, I think I was six three in eighth grade. So sometime in high school, I think between ninth and eleven, I got to six five. Yeah. So were you always the tallest in your in your age group? Yeah, always. Always I was, tallest. I was always the one in kindergarten who. I was the only one in kindergarten who could reach the light switch. So I always got to turn the lights on. <laughs> I mean, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was my job. <laughs> no big deal. Just, no yeah. Deal. I'll get the light switch. Yeah. Steph, will you get the lights, please? <laughs> Steph need the lights. No, Steph, the lights, please. <laughs> um, and when did you, so with your height, you probably were, sought after to play basketball how old were you when you started playing or were there other sports no uh, I started playing when I was seven um I was obviously yeah always tall my family's decently tall um I played volleyball I played softball I played all sports but definitely was not good at soccer not my forte um but yes yeah, so then I just started with basketball so with basketball and then um how old were you when you started getting looks at from colleges uh, so my first look was eighth grade, um, Georgetown, but yeah. And then ninth grade, I got my first offer from Maryland. Ooh, Brenda. Yeah. I went to her camp and she just like called me into her office, sat me across from her. And I was just in ninth grade, like this, this young kid. And she was like, we want you to come here. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And UConn came along and I said, no. <laughs> when did you when did you come come along um that was he was like last he was probably like late sophomore maybe early junior year yeah but then once he offered like once he was like oh we're interested I was like all right I'm coming there so yeah so why we'll we'll rewind a little bit but I why would why you come why were you automatically like yeah because I was there yes you <laughs> sold it it was you and Kylie McLaren's silk sheets <laughs> <laughs> We had satin sheets. We did. We were so, so, uh, um, yeah, we had to give all the recruits our beds and we would sleep on the couch. But anyway, that's hilarious. I forgot about it. Was that, wait, was that a team policy? Like you had to give the recruits your bed? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Not that I was D1, but like when I, I hosted recruits, they slept on our floor in my dorm room. No, they were up in the no, oh. they were up in our apartments and they yeah, we we gave up our room. We're committed That's, to her. We're committed to them. They were. That's why I went. That's why because those although she had silk sheets and silk pillowcases. And I said, what is the point of this? <laughs> they just slipped right off. <laughs> so stupid, but I still committed. So obviously it worked out. So noted, have silk sheets if you want the best players in the country yes yes cool noted yeah um well, that's awesome okay so let's rewind here so you started playing basketball at an early age did you always so you're a very confident person you are very into makeup into hair you did an internship with a makeup company right um you're very 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 confident have you always had that confidence um no but um, I think you know that, but I will tell everyone else why. The listeners. Not why, but obviously being 6'5", um, I was always, you know, I always kind of stood out, was a little uncomfortable with my height um, at first, but then obviously basketball kind of grew that confidence for me because I was good at something um, and it just kind of helped me. So then once, you know, I realized I was really good at it, it just helped me even more. Um, you know, I kind of came into my own as I've gotten older with you know, shedding some of that, that baby weight that I had as a kid. And, um, I don't know, just knowing that my body has kind of brought me where I've gotten and that it's, you know, my vessel for my job. So I take care of it and, um, it's done a lot for me. So I appreciate my body. I love my body 
for what it is at this point. And if someone else does, and I don't care at Good this point. for you. But but you have you should you probably haven't always had that confidence. So when would you say it like switch? Like yeah, basketball is a great a great way to be good at something and kind of build that confidence. But what, when was that time of like, you being like, yeah, like I'm going to make my Twitter and Instagram handle big mama Steph and I'm going to own it. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Like when was that time? Uh, definitely college. I'd say probably, um, I mean, probably like sophomore into junior year of college. I think I just remember there being like kind of that light switch. Um, that's when the big mama thing came up, Kevin, he was the one who thought of it. Wait, I didn't know that. You didn't know Kevin, that? Kevin DeMille created yeah. Big Mama Stuff. Shout out, know. Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Kevin. Shout, shout out to Kevin. No, he doesn't know Kev. Not yet. Oh, he um, yeah, we were, I, I, for some reason, I can't forget that either. We were walking down, um, walking down the street near like Hilltop, and we were just having a conversation about Twitter, or Instagram, or whatever, and he was like, He's like, Steph, you should, like, your name should be Big Mama Steph. And I was like, why? He was like, you're big, and you're, like, the mom of the team. And I was just like, hmm, that's kind of true. So then it stuck, and then ever since then, it just kind of has, haven't changed since. I'm still big, and I'm still motherly in nature. <laughs> motherly in, in nature. some way. In some that's ways. what we said, too. We're, you're Big Mama Steph. You're not Big Mama Steph. You're Hot Mama Steph now. Oh, well, you've always been hot mama stuff to me. Thanks. Um, so, so college time was that time you transformed. So kind of, kind of talk about, um, that transformation. So you said it was freshman, sophomore year. Um, I know you did Sean T. You did a lot of Sean T. You were, you really dived into cooking. Your fashion is phenomenal. So kind of what was like the, mm -hmm. kind of the first steps and what, and kind of what for our listeners of like, if they're going through similar things, like what was that process like? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was like finding out what I loved and finding out what I was passionate about, right? So um, at this point, like I love to cook. I actually, um, if I didn't go to school for like, not for basketball, but main, mainly for basketball, um, I used to say I would have went to culinary school. So I've always loved to cook. Um, you know, I've always loved fashion, makeup and styling and stuff, but I was always scared um, to do things like that because I didn't want to stand out too much. So then once you know, I realized it didn't matter. Then I kind of started to dive into that more because it's something that I love. Um, because, and I, I love that stuff because I love art. Um, I love to draw, I love painting. Um, so to me, makeup and fashion is like, is like art. Um, so yeah, so once I like dove into the things that I loved, it just kind of grew my confidence more and more because I realized I was really good at them. Um, I realized that they, kind of like made me stand a little bit taller um and then I just kept diving into it so it just kind of kept growing as I kept getting good at it including basketball that's so mature of you like, <laughs> no I'm being serious it is like, for sure like to realize that like where do you where do you think you get that mindset from to think like oh I, I want to figure out like what what I like what makes me happy like I mean that's hard to do where do you get that support from? I have no idea. I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I know my family obviously always supports everything I've done and they always have helped to grow, um, you know, I guess the confidence that I lacked as a kid, but I mean, I did go to therapy. I always am a strong believer of having a therapist. Um, 100%, I'm having with you. Talk, yeah. Like someone just to talk to, um, in college though. I mean, I don't know if it was the same for you, but like, Gino for me was a big part of that because um, that was like the initial confidence grower was the basketball right so for me it was finding myself on a team like that with Gino and CD like kind of helping me grow that confidence and teaching me things that outside of basketball that just helped you know um, find out the other parts of me that that I loved and that I cared about. Shout out to Gino and CD. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you too. I mean, I was in the same, same boat just with like my injuries and stuff too. Like you're just kind of a lost, lost puppy there, but you have that stability of basketball. So yeah, along with the coaching staff and then um, Rosemary Regal, just because right. he, was, he was a huge, yeah, huge part of that. 
for me. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so you said, okay, freshman, sophomore year in college. Um, have you won a, did you win a national championship? When was, when was your first championship? Uh, I was a junior. I won junior, junior, senior year. So you're starting, you're starting to get that confidence. You're big mama Steph now. You're having an extra strut. In practice, we'll do that two-man game and score every time with Always. your great feet and that shot. And then you <laughs> win a national championship your junior year. Did you find your confidence get, like, even bigger? Did you find yourself being more um, artistic with your outfits and, your like, like, where were you at with your body image after you won a national championship? Um, I mean, I guess. I don't think I grew, like, too, too much in the last two years of college because I think we were solely focused on just winning, you know, and basketball. I think, like, my jump from uh, sophomore to junior year was, like, that big jump where, I like, I lost a bunch of weight. Um you know, I was kind of focusing on like, we need to win a championship. So then junior, senior year, we're really just solely focused on winning a championship and winning games. Um, I think the bigger jumps that happened were, were right after I graduated uh, from UConn. You know, I, I ended up, I, when I was at UConn, I actually had a moment where I talked to CD and I asked her if I could shave like part of my head. And she was like, absolutely not like you won't be on this team so I said okay my bad <laughs> what happened again <laughs> so once I graduated I um I got a bunch of tattoos I, I bleached my hair and dyed it purple um and I just like started expressing myself in other ways and I just came to find like more of who I am outside of college and outside of basketball um because obviously like you know like that's what UConn was about um so yeah, so I think really the bigger jump was after I graduated, um, being around all these WNBA players and like them just being who they are. And I was like, all right, it's time to find out who I am now. Like, let's so. go. Yeah. So okay, so you win championship junior year, you win national championship senior year. People can Google it, Yahoo it, right? D uh, Yahoo it, yeah. Um, that's on the internet, but what people, and they can know that you were drafted sixth, sixth overall in the first round to DC. So now yeah. you're in a, yeah. So now you're in a new city. Your focus is still on basketball, but you've already, you've accomplished your stuff in college and now you're able to express yourself. And you just explained down your hair, getting tattoos. Um, did you shave the side of your head? I did not. Oh, you didn't do that. Why not? I did not shave it. Yeah, no, why not? Thankfully. I'm actually, I don't regret. You know, it was one of those trends that came and went real quick. Um, <laughs> maybe not. It wasn't quite, I think it's who I thought I wanted to be, but it was like a little too extreme. So instead I just went a full head of purple hair. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so you stood out. I, yeah. I did everywhere. It was a lot. On this, I, I saw a quote somewhere. It might be on your Wikipedia page, but it said, uh, "If they're gonna stare, they might as well stare at something fun." I thought that was a fantastic quote. Yeah, but that yeah, I think that's awesome too. <laughs> yeah, I know, when Daniel told me, I didn't know you said that, and I was like, "That's awesome." Yeah, I feel like I say that in every interview that I ever have, like just every every time. There was just like, oh, like how did you get this confidence and blah, 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 blah. And like, what's something you live by? But that's like, honestly, how I think of my life at this point. I, I don't even think about people who stare at me anymore. Like I'll be with normal, like not normal, Jesus. <laughs> with, like, not normal people, but like my family, my friends, like people who are at normal statures. And they're all like, Steph, everyone's staring at you. And I'm like, I don't even care anymore. Like I just look straight. And I don't even think about the people who are staring at me. Are people recognizing you from the WNBA or are they just looking at you because you're taller female than everybody? I think just a taller female than everyone. Like yesterday in the airport, these women, I was right behind them. And they're just like, <laughs> holy cow. So, yo, she's so damn tall. And I'm like, <laughs> Hi, thank you. 
Hi, my name's Steph. <laughs> Hi, I'm right here, right behind you. I can literally hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you Do too. you have any other like comebacks? Like, you know, people are like, oh my God, you're so tall. You'd be like, well, yeah, you're so short. Or do you no. start like, oh, thanks. I'm actually a jockey. I ride horses. Right. <laughs> I, everyone has like different things, but I just like say thank you. Good for you. Know, you. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Or people, I feel bad, not feel bad, but you know, there's always the people who are like, I'm sure you get this all the time, but do you play basketball? And I'm always, and I'm always just like, I mean, I do get it all the time, but I actually do play basketball. So you're fine. So I always make them feel like, okay, about asking it. You're so kind. <laughs> That's so kind. It's gotta be difficult. I mean, I'm not recognized anywhere, but it would be difficult for me to go places, even in your home hometown of uh your Chicago right now right like mm -hmm. walking around and people recognize you for who you are that would be difficult for me constantly not being able to go somewhere and just like go, go to the grocery store looking like you know I just rolled out of bed yeah what's that or like, like or like going out to dinner or going like yeah. going to have a drink oh my god mm -hmm. how is she able to have a drink it's like yeah. some human but anyway yeah what is that like Steph well I don't think I think people like um well, one is I've I appreciate it. I think I always appreciate the love and the support of people that if they do recognize me, because I think what a lot of um, people don't realize is like because we're in the WNBA, we're not obviously as recognized as the NBA or any other athletes. Um, so it's nice, but it's not usually overwhelming. I mean, sometimes it can be. It's like a little like you know, it, it used to be the worst at UConn. It's not that bad in Chicago or DC because, you know, there's so many people in the city of Chicago. Um, I'm usually just seen as like this tall girl, but like at UConn, it used to be the hardest. I'd be like, can I just, you know, I just want to sit here with my family and eat dinner after a big game, you know, Caroline knows, but it's like all the fans ate at the same restaurant. So they're all wanting to talk to you after a game. It's just like, I just want to sit with my family. I was actually just talking about that with my mom. And my mom was mm -hmm. like, do you remember at UConn, we couldn't even like just go get food without getting interrupted. Like we, I couldn't even have a conversation with my daughter. Yeah. But that, I mean, stores Connecticut. It's the basketball capital of the world. Right. But, so I don't miss that. Yeah, I don't miss that. But. Um, but was, what was that? I said, but the other stuff is nice. You know, people now, it, they're nice. They're nice. Um, talk a little bit about your, your diet. Um, are you really strict? Do you have a certain diet that you do? Is it the same that you did in college to what you're doing now? Um, talk a little bit about that. Uh, no, so I, I'm, I don't know if I'm more strict or less right now, but it's just different. Um, I'm going more at it as like a calorie deficit. Um, so, you know, finding out, you know, the whole body height, weight, everything, how many calories I should take in, how many calories I, um, have to, in order to lose weight. Um, I try not to eat or drink dairy other than eggs because I can't live without eggs. Um, and then carbs, you know, so I, I stay low carb, low dairy. Um, I don't eat a lot of sugar, if, if at all. Um, maybe some natural sugars like fruits and stuff, but I drink a ton of water. Um, but yeah, so I'm up to 28 pounds now. I'm trying We're gonna to get, get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, <laughs> I have just a few, just a few follow-up questions with that. Um, do you have like a nutritionist or is that something that you just took on yourself? Um, I did it myself because I actually had a nutritionist maybe five years ago. Um, and I'm not going to say that it wasn't good, but I don't think it was worth the money. Uh, she was quite expensive and I feel like it was mostly things I could find on the internet at this point. So you know, I just kind of did it with myself. Um, I do have a trainer in Chicago who loves nutrition. So like, she will help me every now and then if I'm like, oh, you know, if I was like, for example, I was at a weight for a while and I couldn't lose any more or anything. And she was, you know, giving me like little tips here and there. Um, that's so, huge. Yeah. Cause that's what I've learned. That's what I've heard, not learned. Cause I should be on a diet, but I'm not, um, that you get to a, like a plateau. Uh, yeah. And then you're kind of like stuck, um, like in weightlifting too, sometimes, but what's, so if you were yeah. to, if you, sorry, Deekers, what was up? I was just, you know, I want to compare and contrast the WNBA and NBA here. It's like, I feel like NBA there, 
you know, if there's a team nutritionist, somebody that's guiding you through this, uh, these guys, guys, because they're all men in the NBA, are worth millions of dollars. Yeah, I mean, what does it feel like to be in the NBA and not have a team nutritionist, not have somebody WNBA. guiding you through, or WNBA, guiding you through this constantly? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it is what it is at this point. Like, with the WNBA, we just got to pick and choose, you know, like, what is uh, the most, not the most important, but, you know, priority. Uh, you know, we only have a certain budget, unlike the NBA. They have a pretty large budget. <laughs> So, I mean, they can, yeah, I mean, they just, you just, you see it online, you know, they're worth millions of dollars. They can buy their own nutritionist, house them if they want. Um, I mean, I saw one time, I don't remember exactly how much it was, but you know, the NBA players, if they're injured, they'll be like, oh, this off season, I was, I spent over $50 million on my body, you know, just between rehab, nutritionist, I'm sure, you know, all that stuff. It's like, we don't have that time or that money to spend on something like that. Um, so we got to figure out our own ways. That just made me think of something. So because of the resources and money and stuff too, oh. most WNBA players are forced to go overseas. Mm -hmm. What is that diet like? What are the resources like in working out wise? Like how different is that than in the States? It's better as it work? Give us a little uh, sneak preview of what it's like overseas. Yeah, um, it's, I mean, diet-wise, it's much harder, I think. Um, I, you know, depends on what country you go to. I'll start with the worst or the hardest, not, let me not say the worst. The hardest when it comes to just kind of taking care of yourself would be China. Um, you know, you live in a hotel, so you constantly have to eat either hotel food or for me, like, I bring three bags and one bag is full of just like American snacks or I bring like four packages of wraps with like peanut butter and, and some type of jelly maybe like things that I can make that I know you know can kind of help me throughout the days because you're living in a hotel room um you know like easy mac cups like stuff like that um but then obviously you have the easier ones like Italy or um Turkey, you know, they have great food over there. Not always easy to diet, especially in Italy, because you're just going to eat pizza and pasta all the time. <laughs> and drink some wine. Yeah. But you usually get an apartment. So you, can, yeah, a lot of wine, a lot of wineries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but you usually get apartments in the European countries. So you're more able to kind of cook for yourself if you wanted to and, you know, figure it out. But China is definitely the hardest. And China is China. Why China? Do they pay you the most in China? Like, where would you get paid the most? Yeah. So for me personally, I, get, I would get paid the most in China. Um, they usually don't have post players on their team. So they pay a decent amount for, for post players. Um, I know a lot of people play in Russia. You know, they play good money, uh, pay good money. Um, then it kind of goes like Turkey, maybe Italy. Um, Israel is probably like a lower one, but yeah. It's interesting. So coming back to the States, um, you now have set a goal to lose weight. Talk to us about uh, what that goal is and what made you want to start doing that. Um, yeah. So for me, this past 2020 was a pretty tough year. Obviously it was for everyone with COVID and uh, quarantining and stuff, but I ended up gaining just too much weight. Um, and then we went for the WNBA, we had a bubble. So I went into the bubble and I got hurt. So then I gained a little bit more weight. So coming out of the bubble, um, you know, I had the chance to go play overseas. I was going to play in Italy, but because I was injured and stuff, they, um, we kind of came to a mutual decision that I wasn't going to play for them because I just, I had to get healthy. And then the only way to really be healthy was to lose weight. So I set my goal for 30 pounds, um, you know, and I've been going, I've gotten, I've gotten to 28 pounds. Uh, so I have like two more weeks slash like a week and a half to get two more pounds, which is definitely doable. Um, to get there before the season. So I'm pretty proud of myself. That's amazing. When Thanks. did you, when did you start that goal? 
What date? Gosh, um, I think sometime in November. Okay, so November, yeah. and then right now for listeners, it is April 11th. So wow, damn, Steph. And you were able to do what, four days in San Antonio? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I've had my ups and downs. I had I had a break, a break at Christmas, and then a break for my birthday in January. And then, you know, there's been the occasional trips that I haven't done great. But I've been able to. You got to have fun, though. I know. It's that yeah. alcohol. It gets me every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear you on that one. Um, so, what would, so if you were to schedule out, do you plan out your meals? And give us kind of like what uh, your day-to-day is like for like meals, like meal prep. Um, I'm not a planner. So I, because I like to cook, I don't like meal prepping. Um, I just, I need like excitement in my life. And that comes from cooking. So I'll make, uh, like, I'll make curry sometimes. Um, I'll make a bunch of Italian stuff, but I obviously use spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti. Um, I use a lot of cashew cream instead of heavy cream. Um, You know, it's just about making, like, those little changes that I've learned that have, like, insanely changed my life. Like, in the mornings and stuff, if I have eggs, I don't use normal cheese. I'll use, like, vegan cheese or just no cheese. I used to go hard on charcuterie boards, but we don't have those anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's more about just cutting out those things. Like people don't realize you eat, you know, like my favorite food is Indian and I love like chicken tikka masala, but like you don't realize how much heavy cream is in that and how fattening it is. So you just kind of make a swap and I can still have it. There you go. It's just little stuff like that. That's awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. That's so great. So what'd you, what'd you, uh, so right now it's whatever time it is. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Um, just a few, well, I'm in a hotel right now. So unfortunately I had hotel food. Um, but I still had just three eggs, half avocado and some turkey sausage. That was it. Wow. Well, that sounds very delicious. I kind of want to have that right now. Um, <laughs> so you not- do not eat breakfast. Um, only I'm only in two cups of coffee right now, but I, I do have two hard boiled eggs that I'm gonna snack on before. I'm kind of doing intermediate fasting, kind of. Not really a fan of it, but there's a lot going on right. There's a lot going on right now, so I like forget to eat sometimes, and I'm like so angry. I get hangry. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I haven't eaten today. But yep. anyway, and then you get ravenous. That's not healthy. That I know. Not- Help me. um so now so okay so let's talk so we're going to continue on this body image thing so how do you stand so you don't have purple hair anymore yes but uh you have a tattoo on your wrist right now how do you before we get into your tattoos how do you stand out how do you how would you say you stand out now besides for your six five height or how do you Um, express yourself now right i don't need much more than that really (laughs) (laughs) um I would say at this point, probably the makeup, I mean, the, the, the beauty part of it, the makeup part. Um, I love to just do wild colors since I don't have it in my hair anymore. Um, you know, I, you guys probably don't know much about makeup, so it's more about the, just the, I know, sorry, did I offend you, Carol? (laughs) No. Um, it's just about the excitement, the colors, the, the brightness. I put jewels on my eyes. I, you know, maybe a little glitter here and there. Uh, I definitely have some more tattoos all over my body. Um, so yeah, just keep doing that stuff. Yeah. So you, so you've gotten into more beauty stuff. Tell us about your internship you did. Yeah, I did an internship with uh, Bobby Brown makeup a few years ago. Um, I can't say it was like super exciting because I was more on the marketing end, which at that time, that's what I thought I wanted to do or be a part of. Um, You know, now I think I just, I just love makeup. I love feeling uh, beautiful. I love making people feel beautiful. Um, You know, not that they aren't beautiful without makeup or anything like that, but it it accentuates our natural beauty. Um, So I just love making people feel good and making them happy. So if that means doing hair, makeup, um, you know, I did everyone's makeup at my sister's wedding. So it was just like, you know, it's just fun. Yeah. It makes, it makes me happy to make other people like look in the mirror and be like, 
God damn. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me yeah. happy. So you're yeah. my favorite. Um, and then you're a model. So talk. talk I'm not a model. You did some stuff. You did wanted, some stuff. Like, you've done some stuff. And it's like, let's like, let's go. Like, just again, going back to that confidence, going back to that hard work, like all those Sean T workouts that you did in the apartments. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, now it's like, yeah, let's celebrate that. So yeah, just talk a little bit more about, about that, your modeling and what that was about. I think for me, the modeling, so I've also always been, okay, how do I explain this? I've always wanted to model, even as a kid. I grew up watching America's Next Top Model, not because of the attention, not because of the popularity that people find in modeling now, like with Instagram and stuff. Like to me, modeling is also art. It's like the person who's the model is the blank canvas and you can throw whatever you want on them and they're just there to show it off. And like, I've always wanted to be that part. I wanted to be the canvas. People just put whatever you want on me and I'm going to rock it. Um, so, you know, now that I'm older and obviously more confident in stuff, um, kind of reached out to a bunch of different people and was like, Hey, I'm really interested in doing this. Can we try, you know, Nike being one of them. I, you know, they said they were going to do a plus size, uh, shoot. And I said, you know, you should do plus size, but you need body types of every kind of woman, um, one being a giant. So <laughs> they agreed um, and they had me join with them. And that was probably the coolest um, that between that and I did Abercrombie, um, which was really also Damn. awesome. Um, so, yeah, so it was really cool for people to go in the mall and kind of see a picture of me. I was like, oh, my God, that's me. Uh, that that is cool. mo- that is modeling. F1. It is. If you were like, Google modeling, that's modeling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, all right, right. We got a very, model. It was like advantageous modeling. That's so take, great, though. Take yeah. advantage. That's so great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I haven't okay. done it in a while, though. Now I just do it in my backyard. <laughs> or on TikTok. On my, yeah, or on TikTok. <laughs> Which is amazing. Steph, what are, what are all the tats and what do they symbolize? Um, I got a few, uh, you know, these ones are from my family, uh, just like the letters of their names, um, that I have roses on the inside of my arm. These are like for my grandma, grandma Rose. Um, this one is my second national championship. Caroline and I have our first one on our foot. We have matching right tattoos there. guys. Sick. I didn't know yeah. that. That's kind of cool. Matching. I mean, yeah. you want to see mine? I don't know if my leg can get that high, though. <laughs> they look exactly the same. But yeah, inside part. Yeah, we got the same Sweet. It's cool. We did not get it in New Orleans. Yeah. We um, thought about it. We actually went, we were like, we should probably think about this. <laughs> Remember, Steph? Remember, we were like, oh, we're all going to go get tattoos or like a body piercing to symbolize like oh, yeah. my last championship, your first championship. And then we're like, we should probably think about this. And then we went back to Connecticut and got it done. No? Maybe yeah. I'm not. Put your and no one, but no one else wanted it. No one else got it. But it's cool. Yeah, makes a good story. Um, yeah, no one else wanted it. It was kind of sad. <laughs> so it's just Carol and I. <laughs> I love it. People think I'm New Orleans Saints fan, but then I tell them the story, and they're like, "Oh, that's way better." Like, yeah, yeah. everyone, yeah, everyone always asks this too. They're like, what date is that? Is that your birthday? I'm like, why would I have my own birthday tattoo? Remember, on my body? it's in case you yeah, forgot it. Like, I'm like, no, that's not that, but thank you. Good try. Like, good guess. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, Steph, I, I got to get, I got to get your opinion on something really important. What do you think of Dodie going to Wisconsin? Wait, I can't hear you. Did I mute it? Wait, you can't. No, hear I can hear you. I think this is the internet. Oh. Yeah, I think it's, it, it was the internet. Okay. <laughs> we're back he's like wait what what's the news what what do you think of Dodie going to wisconsin oh i'm so excited for her first of all because it's close to chicago um and second of all because she gets to work with marissa um obviously i love marissa i i've been to a couple of her games at boston uh where she coached before and she's she did a really good job 
Um, and so I'm excited for her, but I'm also excited for Caroline to be able to do this college coaching thing. I know it's something that she's always wanted to do and she's coached other times, but I'm so excited for it. And I'm excited to come watch. I know. What? I know we're going to be two, two and a half hours away from each other. Oh, yeah, I know. It's I'm perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. I- I would assume Dodie was like a player coach in college. What, what do you think of coach Dodie just in general? What, what do you think <laughs> coach Dodie brings to the table? Um, honesty. I think she Definitely. is, uh, she's always been a very honest person, player, um, and toughness. I mean, she always kind of challenged. I always remember her challenging us, um, whenever she wasn't in, the drills because she was injured uh she was always kind of you know cheering us on but like making sure that we were going harder making sure we were playing harder um I assume just my assumption that Marissa would have her work with guards mostly um and I'm excited for them I mean they're gonna have a great coach in Carol and she knows what she's talking about so I think they're gonna be really good I'm excited <laughs> I can't wait for you to come to games. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be fun. I know, I know. It'll be really fun. Really and I can't funny. wait to see you in Chicago because I haven't been to um because I've been to Deerfield. I've been to the Chicago area, but I've never seen a game. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I mean in person in your yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be different this year, but it'll still be good. Are you gonna be in the same apartment um that you were before? in Deerfield yes okay yeah I know it's like good and bad because actually we're closer Deerfield closer to Wisconsin than like downtown Chicago that's all I cared about right yeah (laughs) you can come stay there and then we can go to the kids perfect okay I want to ask some other questions here about Steph um Steph I I play basketball obviously not the level neither of you and Dodie are at um but when I watched some like videos last night to get acquainted with your game, I was really surprised with how uh, great you were with your left hand around the basket. And not that I'm surprised. You don't see that very much with big players anymore with their off hand. And I was curious, being that you were so tall early and I saw some photos of your family, how did you develop a left hand and a, a post game in general with probably not a another female your height around in your area how did you develop that game to be honest I have no idea uh (laughs) I just feel like it had just natural I just I don't because I mean don't get me wrong obviously high school I was always working I had an amazing high school coach she like she cared so much about the team in general um with me you know with AU um I think it helped me with with high school was going outside of my like little town like originally I was on the AU uh, AU team in my town but then I went to a New York City team um and then I went to a Tennessee team so I got to kind of broaden my horizons with with who I competed against uh because of my AU teams that I chose when I was in high school um but yeah I mean I feel like I just did it because I'm not gonna lie to you I didn't I wasn't like a hard practicer yeah. uh, I can't say that I you know I and I regret that honestly as a kid like I regret not working even harder to get better at things um because I kind of coasted until I got to college but then you know once I was in college it was like Carolina was like CD and Gino they didn't let you do a turnaround jump shot in the post like I had to have a right and a left hook shot um and they kind of just nail that into you so yeah. Actually, to follow up on that question, um, we would play Brittany Griner at Baylor mm-hmm. and stuff. I don't know if it was with you or if it was if it was with Tina Charles, but they would come out with a like a broomstick. Oh, we didn't mm-hmm. have like the, we didn't have like the fancy like right now they have like fancy like fake mm-hmm. dummies now that they can do it. Dummies. No, we, <laughs> you know, d- these dummies. <laughs> there was literally a broomstick, and the I remember I don't know if it was CD or she probably yeah. had a practice player do it with the broomstick trying to block the shot while the post players would be doing their their work, their post moves. And it was just like, so then when you went up against Brittany Griner, you knew that you needed a higher arc or you needed, you needed, you needed to use your body more to separate. 
So yeah. I remember that distinctively being on the guard side, looking down, being like, what the hell are they doing with the broomstick? Hitting her with the broom. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that what you were doing? Is that what you were doing at the garden, Carol? Yeah. Well, we were just like, she was working on her trick shots. Come on, trick shot Dodie. Right, exactly. The guard never did anything. <laughs> what? That is a lie. That is a lie. It's we're not making- a lie. You guys were always like, <laughs> one, <laughs> two. <laughs> and we're down here getting beat up by CD. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Um, <laughs> Whatever, our shooting percentage is pretty good. So we were doing something right. It was. It was. <laughs> Tell me what your current you thoughts championships are. for a reason, right, Seth? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what your current thoughts are on the player empowerment movement in the WNBA. Um, I mean, just honored to be a part of it. Uh, I think for me, I've always, you know, I've always been proud of being part of the WNBA, but I feel like the last few years have been uh, just huge for us. I think standing for kind of the start uh, a few years ago with the LGBTQ rights, um, equality of women, you know, obviously the social injustices that have gone on the last couple of years. Um, and then now with more of the equality of, of pay and stuff, I just, I'm just proud to be a part of it. I think we've always kind of been one of those leagues that have <laughs> trailblazed um, when it comes to definitely just speaking out about what we care about, or even if it's as simple as wearing a certain t-shirt um, for people to see on, on Instagram and stuff and social media, I think we've, we've never been afraid of it. You know, even if we didn't have support from other NBA players or other leagues, it didn't matter to us. Uh, we always want to stand for what we feel is right. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just really proud and happy that I can be a part of it um, because I think people are going to look back you know, in a few years to these moments and, and there will be pictures of girls from our league, which is really important for young girls to see. And it was, yeah, it was proven that you guys do have a loud voice just from this past year. I mean, it's incredible. It's, it's almost a, a blessing in disguise that you guys were able to all be in a bubble together to really, mm-hmm. I mean, your voices are already super loud and you guys stand for awesome, like awesome, awesome things, but to be all yeah. together in the same bubble able to have that picture of every single one of you in the, like, that's awesome. Like, and just because of logistics and resources, you might not have been able to do that if you weren't in a bubble together, but yeah, I mean, it's awesome to see and yeah, keep doing it. Yeah. What does it look like in the future? Where do you think it goes from here? The player empowerment movement? Um, question. I mean, what we're trying to do, I just, keep going with it. I I think, um, you know, there was this big story. I didn't see everything that went on with it, but the whole Draymond Green thing, um, speaking about uh, us complaining, um, I saw, you know, I saw some of it. I didn't read all of it, but I think the biggest thing was like Sue Bird tweeted back to him and was like, like, you're saying it to the wrong people. You know what I mean? It's like, we just need people like Draymond and other NBA players who do support us and they understand what we're trying to do but like focus it at the right people um you know we are constantly trying to get our foot in the door with with companies and and people who will support us and say that they believe in women empowerment and are for the cause um but kind of getting them to put their money where their mouth is to support us um so i think it's just kind of going with that just keep pushing uh for the equal pay and not even equal pay but just just more support uh, for the WNBA and for other other women um, in the in the world. So, just kind of keep going. Well, uh, within that, what do you think of the new WNBA jerseys? Fire, fire. I what's mean, your, what's your favorite edition for uh, Chicago? Um, I mean, probably the Rebel because of the like you know the t- <laughs> you know, cool pattern. Can you, can you explain to the listeners? like what that's all about do you know the story behind it i just know it's like breaking the ceiling breaking the yeah breaking the ceiling Love so that. it's yeah. all shards of glass throughout it's awesome yeah um one of my friends posted on instagram recently that 
um, and I, I thought this was really valuable to share is she's going to start watching more women's sports in her household purely for the point of her freshman daughter in high school having people to look up to whereas i grew up in an all-male male family we watched all-male sports not that i don't like watching women's sports i i still turn on college softball i live with the softball player in college and i think that's an awesome point the more we normalize watching women's sports girls sports in our households at home the more that next generation normalizes watching women's sports that's awesome Probably yeah awesome. absolutely yeah i think that's i think that the ncaa women's tournament was like incredible this year for that exact reason i think although i'm not you know i've never been a huge fan of social media in general because it ends up kind of uh focusing on the wrong thing sometimes when it comes to like girls and sports and and these unnatural um expectations that they should have for themselves but i do appreciate it because it's brought a lot of attention to uh younger girls in sports and women in sports um including wba and the the women in the ncaa tournament so i think this last year has been kind of huge for women's sports and and getting a lot of younger viewership is really important i think that's huge too and then with um sarah the kicker for vanderbilt that was huge too. And then yeah. seeing, <clears throat> seeing young girls watching and cheering, or um, I think the Phoenix Mercury just posted something with Diana Tarasi's voiceover about how like they've always been watching, mm -hmm. like give us a stage. And I think it's just, yeah, it's so empowering. Just knowing like if you put it out there, people are going to watch. I mean, look at just this, if you put the numbers together too, the numbers are there. Yeah. You can't put it out there, but yeah. if you build it, they will come. Yes. Build the dreams. Well, to the same point, like Augusta <laughs> Women's uh, Amateur, right? They've been, haven't had women's a tournament ever at Augusta National. Obviously, the Masters is going on right now. In the past three years, they're hosting a women's amateur tournament. And I, I tuned in to watch that. And I, I think it's fantastic that a place that's been so specific and maybe um, exclusive is now opening up to you know broader opportunities yeah yeah that's awesome you guys ready to do some competitive banter here no could have to ask her one more question daniel oh steph you ever golf before what why, why is golf the greatest game on earth um i have golfed i'm not great at it um but i enjoy it uh i can't say that i think it's the greatest game on earth but it is calming which i appreciate and i get a nice tan yes which is all i care about yes such a unique, that's like the most unique answer i think we've got yet yeah i get tan yeah ankle tans and golf are a real thing for real exactly right. you should you should see my golfing outfits i'm usually not allowed on the course because <laughs> not a lot of clothing <laughs> interesting get skirts and wait i have something about that um you know women golfers have like the tank top with the polos yeah how come guys can't have that or guys don't have that option it's just i mean it's just a women's thing um yeah collared shirts have to like uh even shorts for men have to be a certain length you can't wear gosh what are those those uh chub, are they called like chubbies you know the oh chubby's the super short shorts can't wear those golf they have to be a certain length like knee knee length Chubbies. normally it's one of those things that you know i think this is probably the barrier to entry in the game to be brutally honest and i think you go play a lot of muni golf you see a lot of guys wearing basketball shorts and tank tops and the hat backwards it's just definitely a different avenue to grow the game so yeah. that's the kind of golf i'm used to you got people in basketball shorts i'm i walk in in like short yoga tights tights <laughs> not appropriate a couple cocktails in the hand all right so steph will not be playing at oswego lake ah she could make it work um let's do some banter here i want to i want to hear some answers these are going to be pretty good so steph how this works is we're going to do best karaoke songs whatever you want to make that how you sing it other people singing it whatever you're first Dodie second i'm gonna go third fourth 
then we snake back. Make sense? Okay. So yeah, so you go, you pick one song. Well, we can talk about it and banter. Then I'll pick the second song. We can talk and banter about it. Daniel goes third and fourth. I go fifth. You go sixth and seventh. I go eighth. Daniel goes ninth. So it's like it's like old school like playground rules. We'll talk, we'll talk you through it. I don't understand. Am I singing or am I just saying it? You're just saying it, and then we're gonna eat you alive for whatever you pick. (laughs) You can sing it if you want. (laughs) We are singing our karaoke. It's art form. Come on. However you want. I'm so confused. All right. Just say just say the name of it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Oh, right now? Go. Yeah, your first pick. First pick first. in the best karaoke songs competitive banter draft is Respect, Aretha Franklin. Oh. Ooh. I did not have Easy. Oh. <laughs> um I'm just thinking about it and I think that would be awesome. I would definitely lose my voice singing that one. <laughs> I don't have anything to banter about because I know it. I mean, that's just not Are something I. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. yeah. Re, 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 yeah. That's awesome. That's pretty good. We didn't sing that. We didn't sing that last weekend. I know. I got another one from last weekend. That's my other. My other okay. One. Cool. All right. So my turn. I'm gonna go with "Piano Man" by Billy Joel. Piano Man. We we sang that last weekend. Are these like nice all the songs like, that you guys used to sing together? No, we actually just sang at the final four this what, two weekends ago, last weekend. So the piano man's great because you just all lock arms and you just rock back and forth. Yeah. Sing us a song. Sing me a song you're the piano man. And Billy Joel's Billy Joel. Yeah. Anyway. The feel good one. Yeah, I mean, are these ones you go to a piano bar? Like people are really gonna be so that's what was in my head because we were at a piano bar. Oh, okay, sweet. Oh. Okay. Shout Love out to it. Keith. Um, okay. <laughs> oh man, I gotta this is my, my first pick is gonna be Sweet Caroline Neil Diamond. I mean, come on, bop bop ba. Everybody swing seek. Bop bop ba. Hi, my name's Caroline. <laughs> Right. Hi, uh, Caroline. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I shouldn't have no, picked you it just did. for that. Yes. No, you my grandma's name is Caroline. And like we oh, sang it at her 80th birthday. I didn't even think about Dodie over here. Oh, yeah. Did, we, did you Sweet even know Carol. my first name was Caroline? <laughs> Sweet That's Carol. That's happened before. People are like, Dodie, Dodie, Dodie. Like, what's your first name? Yeah. Caroline. Um, okay. Second pick, Living on a Prayer. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. That was my um, that was my high school, uh, basketball teams. Like, you know, when you come out to do your little warm ups, it was yeah. Just, it started with like the oh, I'm just running out. We're halfway there. Yeah. Oh, living on prayer. Yeah, yeah oh my, love I, it. I feel like we can't banter about these because they're no, they're pretty good. Yeah, I think we should all go karaoke together. Karaoke. <laughs> That'd be sick. That would be fun. I crush it. I could sing really good, can't carry a tune. So whatever. I'm a screamer. Yeah, I can see. I'm that. a performer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing for shit, but I can perform. Okay. That's, that's what karaoke is all about, right? Okay. Yeah. Mine is My Humps by Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> oh my God. Talk about performance. Why? What's going to do with all that junk? All that junk inside that trunk. I'm get 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 you drunk, get you love drunk up my home. My best part is like one? mix your own milk with my cocoa puff, milky <laughs> milky. That part, nail it. <laughs> People love it. <laughs> Gets the crowd milky, going. Milky, right. I did not yeah. see this one coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me I bet that gets the crowd going. <laughs> now these are like literally off the top of my head because I didn't get a chance to like really think about it, but. Um, Steph, you get to go two in a row here. Your last oh. two. Um, hmm. One is it's always going to be Katy Perry fireworks. That is my jam. Wait, Caroline for you, knows Katie. that. I was waiting for Katy Perry um, from you. That Do also- you ever feel already buried deep, six feet under, and I know you can't hear. Nice. 
Steph, do you remember oh, when you were, actually, your, do you remember your freshman year in the dorms, you did a dance to it? I was just going to say that. Oh. I actually do you have it remembered? Where I. With the uh, pla plastic bag. <laughs> you throw yeah, it. With the plastic sandwich. Do you ever I feel. I have a plastic bag, but I like. Like a plastic bag. Like a bag. plastic bag. <laughs> that was so <laughs> stupid. We were, we were in the so dorms. Like, we, you were in your dorm still your freshman year. And I was like, you performed. Because baby, you're fine. <laughs> Love that. That's a good one. I, I'll go I with that one. dance for it. So, and that was before like TikTok and like social media. Imagine if we had TikTok in college. Oh my goodness. Have you ever he seen? Would have for sure been famous. 100%. Dodie, she always says this. Have you ever seen the Katy Perry that thing though, where she's uh, helping that special needs girl, that special needs girl learns kind of how to communicate and sing via that song. It's worthwhile to like d Yahoo and watch it. I'm serious. It's no, cool. I've never seen this. Definitely yeah. gonna yeah, definitely Google that. I'll email Online. you. Guys. Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you. I'll find it and send okay. it to you. Um, you get another one. Your last one. Oh, um, oh, that's a toughie right now. Um, I feel like I don't know a specific one, but I feel like it would have to be like a rap song at this point. Like maybe some Meg The Stallion. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe a little act out by the city girls i mean you like, got to give us a specific one here um meg i mean maybe a little wop <laughs> <laughs> i mean it depends on the room you know if we're reading the room <laughs> oh, we're going if we're reading wop. the room we're, we're, we're the going with bar. wop we're going with wop that'll that'll that's an attention getter hilarious <laughs> it gets the crowd going Oh yeah, my I gosh, you guys' picks are unbelievable. <laughs> I was between that or share, so we went for walk. <laughs> I like walk. <laughs> I like walk, share. Oh my god, I didn't even think about like Dodie, Mama it's your Mia pick. Soundtrack. Oh, it's my pick. pick. Yeah. Well, you... My last pick is a no-brainer is Don't Stop Believing by Journey. I have that one. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to us. Uh, well, yeah. It is boring, but like I'm a big Mamma Mia fan, so anything on the Mamma Mia soundtrack, um, Celine Dion, Cheryl Crow, Girls mm. Wanna Have Fun, like there's just so many out there. Yeah, there are Meredith there Brooks. Are. Meredith Brooks. I mean, there's just so many good ones. But anyway, yeah. um, I don't know. I'm gonna round this out. I I'm gonna give yeah, you an. I'm, I'm gonna it. give you a honorable mention, but that's not gonna be my pick. Honorable mention, I think, is gonna be "Shallow" by Gaga and Bradley Cooper because I think that'd be a great one as like a duet, but it's not quite there yet. Um, mm. Who? Shallow, the from, Lady um, Gaga, Bradley Cooper, like from the movie song. So the, from um, the movie, yeah. What's the movie? Um, no I've idea. actually never seen the movie. You a, haven't. The, a star is a star, star is born. 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 Yeah, I have not seen it. You should. I know. Okay, so I that's have, my I know, but mention. everyone says it's sad. It, it is, is very sad. sad. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to watch this movie. But that's a good that's that's a good honorable mention. I'm gonna go a current event here and this this might not be a really good karaoke song. You'd have to read the room. I mean, if it was at somebody's house, I'm gonna go Rough Riders Anthem by DMX. <laughs> Just because I think it'd be awesome. Aww. Shout out. Good choice. Shout yeah. Out. Shout out. You gotta sing a little bit Wait, though. Sing a little for it. For I gotta remember which one that is. Stop. I know he's like, what drop. Do, what do? Shut him down. Yeah. Open up shop. Oh no! It's how the Rough Riders roll. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That'd actually be a good one for my for my voice. <clears throat> Sorry. It Let's hear it, Jody. <laughs> Any DMX song, <laughs> Carol. Um, I just got my voice back, Steph. By the way, I did not have it all week. You just what? I said I just got my voice back. I didn't have it all week. Oh, from last weekend. <laughs> Can of bars. Steph, thanks for coming on the pod. Thanks for telling the story. Like I love the energy that we got going on here. Yeah. Truly the best. Thanks. My absolute thanks favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A pleasure. A pleasure. A yeah, pleasure. good luck with uh we didn't even tap into USA B three on three. So good luck with three on three and 
qualify so we can cheer you on in the Olympics. Got you. I know. We got to okay. get it done. Go, Go Badgers. Get it. For sure. All right. Go we'll Badgers. Get out of here. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.